Okay, in this lesson, we are going to learn about the concept on why does changing frequency of the wave actually also changes its frequent, uh, wavelength. From our simulation, whenever we change the frequency of the wave, the wavelength also changes. So uh, if you look at this, uh, the current frequency is uh, 1.5 and you find that the wavelength is roughly about 4. So let's see what happens when you change the uh, frequency. The frequency is right now increased to 3 Hz and you notice that the wavelength actually changes. And you look very carefully, right now uh, one wavelength is roughly about 2. Okay. So right now let's uh, decrease the wavelength, sorry, decrease the frequency to 0 0.75 Hz. So you notice that when frequency decreases, the wavelength actually increases. And in this case, half the wavelength is roughly about 4 cm. So to summarize, frequency is uh, 1.5, wavelength is 4 cm. Frequency is 3, the wavelength is reduced to 2. Uh, but you find that if the frequency is reduced to 0 0.75, half a wavelength is 4, which means that one wavelength is 8. So from our observation, if we compare two similar waves, we can actually roughly gauge which wave has a higher frequency. You find that for generally for a higher frequency, the shorter the wavelength. Conversely, if you have a lower frequency, the longer the wavelength. Why is that so? Actually, it is because for the same wave, the speed of wave is actually constant. So we have this speed of wave formula is equal to frequency times the wavelength. If you increase the frequency, you find that the, uh, in order to keep the velocity to be the same or uh, speed of wave to be the same, the wavelength has to be reduced. Or if you reduce the frequency, become smaller, the wavelength itself has to increase so that the V remains the same. So it means that if we are able to increase the frequency, the wavelength will decrease automatically to give you the same value. And likewise, the same. If we decrease the frequency, the wavelength will increase correspondingly. So remember our simulation. These are the numbers that we obtain. And if we find uh, plug in the numbers, uh, velocity times wavelength, okay, in this case is equals to six centimeter per second. Okay, three, and. 0.75 will still be 6 cm. So you notice that the speed of wave is roughly about constant. But of course it doesn't address the question why doesn't the speed of wave actually change when we change the frequency? Okay, it is because though we can calculate the speed of wave by knowing the frequency and the wavelength of the wave, but the speed of wave actually does not depend on frequency of the wavelength of the wave. Uh, you might find it confusing. I mean, like, isn't velocity equals to frequency times wavelength? So why wouldn't uh, speed of wave depends on frequency or wavelength? Okay, I use an analogy to help you to understand. Um, the average speed of a person can be calculated by knowing that um, the distance that he has run, in this case, a hundred meter, for example, and of course the time taken to complete this running. So let's use uh, sixteen seconds. So the average speed is just distance divided by time. So 100 divided by 16 and you get 6.25 meters per second. Okay, so this is relatively simple. So what if we want to find the average speed of the person after he has ran only 80 meters? So he has run 80 meters, but the idea is that he still completes 100 meters. It's just only that we want to find his speed when he hits that 80 meter distance. Okay. So would you actually repeat the calculation by just taking the distance to be 80, but still use the same time taken? So his average speed is 80 divided by 16, equals to 5 meters per second, which is slower than 6.25. I hope that you have realized that the time taken by this person will no longer be 16, but rather should be a shorter timing. Okay, it is because the person has ran a shorter distance of 80 meters compared to 100 meters, 
So you can reasonably make a good estimate that the time taken to run 80 meters is also about 0.8 times of the time taken. So in this case, roughly about 12.8. Um, the main reason is because we assume that the person's average speed is the same throughout this run. So the average speed is 80 divided by 12.8, so it is still 6.25 meters per second. Or another way to think of it is that similarly, if you give this person a longer time to run, okay, instead of 16 seconds, you run 20 seconds, would he be able to run a longer distance? Okay, that means that would he be only still run 100 meters or more than 100 meters? I think that if he maintains his average speed, he would be able to run. Okay, the distance is equal to speed times times. If his speed is 6.25, okay, multiply by 20, and his distance will be 1.25. So what's my point? My point is that though you can calculate the speed is equal to distance divided by time, but if you change the distance, all the time actually doesn't affect the speed of the person. Okay, so distance all the time are not not factors that determines the speed of the person. So what are factors that can affect or change the speed of the person could be maybe how fit this person is, whether it's an athlete, or maybe it's actually that day the track condition, Okay, whether is it a very smooth one or it's a rough or filled with obstacles, or even the weather, Okay, is it rainy or sunny or windy day. Okay, So these are the factors that actually affect or determine the speed of the person. So similarly, speed of a wave is actually not determined by frequency or wavelength of the wave. And uh, changing the frequency will also not change the speed of the wave, just as changing the distance doesn't change the uh, speed of the person. So, uh, and so which means that changing the frequency will actually cause a corresponding change in the wavelength of the wave. So what are the, some of the factors that will affect or change the speed of wave since frequency or wavelength is not a factor? Okay, uh, if we use a string wave as similar to a, sim a simulation, it will be the material that the string is made of, whether maybe it's made of metal or maybe a nylon. Or uh, it could be the tightness of the string. Okay, is it tight or very loose? Or uh, maybe the string is actually placed in air or in water. Okay, all this will affect how fast the uh, speed of wave would move in the string. Uh, ultrasound waves of uh, 30 kilohertz underwater has a wavelength of about 5 cm. And I want you to find the wavelength of the ultrasound if the frequency is increased or changed to 50 kilohertz. So what you need to do is first to find the speed of uh, ultrasound by uh, frequency times the wavelength. So you just substitute in whatever value we have and it's roughly about 1500 meters per second. Since we know that speed of wave doesn't change, so if we change the frequency, okay, you still speed of sound is still uh, frequency times wavelength, but the frequency has changed. You substitute in the thousand five in, and you should be able to find the new wavelength, which is reduced. Okay. So this is the end of today's lesson. Please subscribe and support my channel. For my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics, please visit my blog at boringphysicsteachers.wordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.